Hello everybody, this is Freddy with Freddy Can Fly. Um, welcome back. Today, in the next Heli Tips and Tricks video, I wanted to go over with you viewers how to fully assemble, grease, and maintain the feathering shaft and thrust bearings that sit within your blade grips and also the dampening um, of the main block here. So, um, I've got the T-Rex uh, 600, I believe this is the V2 head, uh, but I'm using the V1 grips, but it's still, it's still going to serve the same purpose for this video. Um, so what I'm going to do, um, in your kit it does come assembled. Always, always, always disassemble and reassemble using Loctite and grease properly. So, I'm going to get this torn apart. We'll set it out here, we'll go over what should be included and also other materials you will need to fully reassemble this whole head system. So follow along guys, we'll get this done and we'll go over some of the pros and cons, the do's and don'ts and uh, make sure you guys get yours assembled properly. Okay guys, so here we go. I've got my main head assembly broken apart. We're gonna go over what should be included in your kit and things you will need to do this assembly properly. Now, obviously we've got our head block, okay, and I've just uh, rubber banded my mixing base arms up so that they're out of the way and they're not flopping around. Um, when doing the head block, do make sure you go through and loosen and lock tight um, these arms and also the pivot points right here. Um, this video isn't necessarily about that, but just a good tip for you to note. Um, obviously we've got our blade grips, um, and as I said, I'm using the V1 blade grips on this kit. Um, so make sure you've got those. Now we've got our feathering shaft or spindle shaft. It's been called a couple different things but uh, I typically go by feathering shaft. Um, make sure you've got that in there as well. Okay. Now for our dampening system the kit includes us a sleeve for the center of the hub and then two damper rubbers for both the left and right hand side. Now these black rubbers are going to be for a little bit more aggressive 3D so they're stiffer. Um, I believe the gray ones that they have are for more mild sport flying and then also they make all the extreme hard 3D ones by KDE Direct, things like that. So choose your dampeners and get ready to install those. Now you'll see here that we've got a copper spacer on each side. And guys I found it helps to really line up all your stuff like this in chronological order that way you don't get confused. Um, but you'll see we've got our two uh, brass colored spacers, okay? And we've got these two um, rounder inner race looking spacers here or washers. Um, those are going to be very important. Make sure you have those. Now, when we go over our, our thrust bearing sets, okay, take note that one of your thrust bearings is labeled in, one of them is the actual bearing itself. And on this bearing, We've got the cup that's open on one side and it's closed on the other. Um, this will come into play here shortly in the video, but we will get to that. The other um, outer race of the thrust bearing is labeled out. And then we have this extra washer. This is a very important washer, guys. Make sure you have it. And then we've got the screw to seal it all together. Now, obviously, we've got the left-hand assembly and the right-hand assembly, um, dampening system, spindle shaft, main hub, and our two blade grips. So we will be needing those materials also um, our tube of white lithium grease um, as said in uh, previous videos you can use triflow or any other white lithium grease I'm using the Align um, a bottle of Loctite obviously that's a must and you're going to need two of the same exact um, hex shaped wrenches I like to use one um, 90 degree bent one for, for torquing it and then I use a handle based one to to steady all my parts on and put them in we'll go over that here in a second so this should be all you guys need to get set up and get ready. Um, the first part of our assembly is going to be putting our dampener, or dampening system on the feathering shaft and into the main hub. Okay guys, so here we go. Um, what I typically do first is I'm going to take my head block assembly here. Um, I'm going to separate out the parts that I require, which we're going to need our sleeve and our two dampener rubbers for right now. Um, and all we're going to do is just loosely fit them in. They will be preloaded in um, once we tighten everything down. And if you don't understand preload yet, I will go over that in a separate video segment. I'm going to be making strictly on preload, but it's a very important term to learn and understand. Um, but just a quick overview. 
we're going to go ahead and get our sleeve and you're going to want to just slide that sleeve all the way in just kind of pop it into place there like I said this will all be preloaded together here pretty soon um, and then we're going to insert a dampener rubber into each side now I hope you can see this on the camera but take note that one side of that is flat and flush and the other one is rounded it tapers out that tapered out side must face out of the head block this is important on this specific setup um, some dampener rubbers may be different but that's what these ones call for so go ahead and just press pressure fit those in make sure they sit snug um, and real quick guys what preload is going to refer to when I say that without getting too in depth here is obviously these dampener rubbers are, are made to be um, compressed now when we tighten our feathering shaft down from both sides it's going to compress or preload these dampener rubbers which basically preload is how much compression are they going to get um, and what that allows for is a lot stiffer of a feathering shaft so that you're not wobbling around and you get a lot crisper movements now different dampener rubbers are going to have a different preload with different compression on them um, and like I said we'll get into this a little bit more in a different video but just so you guys know what I'm talking about um, so there's just this assembly here uh, we are now going to set this to the side and we are going to begin um, our, our feathering shaft and thrust bearing assembly and the first thing we're going to start off by doing is greasing our thrust bearings so get your guys' grease out um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and line all my bearings up right down here so that uh, they'll be a little bit easier to grease and maintain and when I get that done we'll come back and we'll go over how to grease the bearings okay so as you guys see here I've got my thrust bearing sets lined up um, I try to keep them in order you know a left one and a right one I've got an in and an out and a center an in and out and a center so I, just so I don't get confused now when we're greasing these um, one thing I really like to look for is um, obviously keep a napkin handy over here as always guys keep it clean um, but I like to have a grease dispenser that's got some sort of a tip to where I can get a really fine amount of grease out of there not a gob um, because what our goal is right now guys is we've got that little inner race in the thrust bearing that needs to have a nice little coat of grease on it um, the in and out are identical in that matter and then we've got this inner thrust bearing here and every single one of those little cups in there needs to be filled with grease okay and at first this was a little tricky for me to figure out but I found a pretty good method um, so let me go ahead and try to get the camera zoomed in and we'll go over how to properly grease these okay you guys so hopefully this is zoomed in far enough so that you guys can get a crystal clear picture of what's going on here um, basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our grease tube here and I always usually start with the outer radial bearings here and like I said, they have this nice little inner indent where these ball races are going to sit. And obviously we don't want metal rubbing on metal because the friction of those will cause them to heat up and, and potentially damage them. Um, so what we want to do is just get a nice good bead on there. Um, not, a, not a consecutive from beginning to end bead, but um, typically what I do is um, just kind of hold it down with one finger here and just begin our grease here, get our grease kind of coming out. And what I do is I just kind of kind of run it along and smear it as I go and uh, as always guys don't be afraid to over grease because it can always be wiped off you know um, I'd rather have too much on here than not enough any day so we're just gonna continue to go around here get that grease on there really good okay and it helps if you kinda um, I don't know if you've ever cake decorated but you know how they've got the frosting tubes and, and they'll they'll do those little uh, decorative things where they pull out and they push down and they pull out and they push down it's kind of the same concept if you if you continuously squeeze on your bottle and push down and then lift and push down and lift and push down and lift um, it'll give you a really decent nice little um, beaded weld looking effect if you will um, so that's what I do so we've got that one greased well okay so I'm just gonna hurry up and run through and do this one that way we're not wasting all of our video time here um, but you can, you'll notice I'm kind of, like I said, I'm kind of lifting up and pushing down and lifting up and pushing down. Um, and that works really well, guys. It, it evenly distributes the, uh, the grease pretty well. So we're going to keep doing this. And your first couple of flights, you'll actually see a lot of this grease seep out onto your main blade. So keep an extra rag or towel handy. Um, and that's a good thing. That's what you want to see. So um, that just means you did your job right. 
Okay, so now for this inner one, usually what I do, this one's going to be a little different. I'm going to force this grease in. So what I do is I take the tip of my grease insertion tool here, and I'm going to stick it into one of these, uh, uh, what's the word here, empty spaces, if you will, in between each one of these balls. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to compress my tube to squeeze grease into it. And as I do that, I want to pull out and leave you know, a good remainder of grease in there. So let me try to demonstrate that for you here. So I'm going to get my tool in there. I'm going to squeeze some grease in, let it flow, and I'm going to pull it out. Squeeze some grease in, let it flow, and I'm going to pull it out. And we want to just do this to every single one of these little inser er, inserts here. Okay. Sorry if my fingers are getting in the way. This one takes a little bit more finessing. Um, but I would say overall, I mean, they all have an equal importance as far as getting them greased. But you really want to get these bad boys greased. Um, what I found happens um, while I'm doing this, just a little, little chit-chat here, um, is if you don't grease these enough and they rub on each other dry and they get hot, the holes that are holding those those balls inside of this thrust bearing kind of elongate and when you take this apart or even sometimes during flight these little balls actually come out they come dislodged and I mean obviously you know common sense tell you that's never gonna be a good thing and never a good result so uh, make sure you grease these up guys so I'm gonna try to go ahead and show you now what this one should look like when it's fully greased here um, let me go ahead and, and zoom out our camera um, and typically that's that's how we're gonna do it guys that's how we're gonna grease these and you can see that let's see if my camera will get me in there you can see all the grease that I have punched right inside there okay make sure you do it just like this okay so now what we're gonna do is obviously we're gonna complete the other three thrust bearings I'm not gonna film that I'm gonna go ahead and grease those real quick and we'll come back um, and then we're going to go ahead and begin our assembly.